I'm really pissed about this one, guys. And uh, like, honestly, it really, really made me bad. I saw. What up guys, it's The Fighting Therapist here. And for today's video, I really want to just do a in-depth breakdown of the coronavirus, of things that you could do, things that you should stay away from, the virus itself, how it works, how you can get infected. And as well, there's a lot of malinformation that's getting tossed out there. So I just would really want to cover everything in this video. As well, I'm gonna be giving you guys a cool little hack that you could do at your house of how to make your own hand sanitizer since shelves are being bought out of the stores and there's no soap or anything left. So that's what this video is gonna be about right now. Before we start this video, guys, I just want to make sure that everyone is staying safe out there. And for those who do have a family member or friend that is affected by this virus, my prayers are with you. And I really hope that everything goes well for you and that family member and that they get through this and that everything is okay. So before we start the video as well, I'm not a doctor. I'm not, I don't, not an expert in this field when it comes to the coronavirus or viruses just in general, but I am a healthcare practitioner and I wanna do my part as an an athletic therapist to give you guys the right information that's needed as well a lot of the information that i'm using in this video is on the world health organization's website where they're publishing almost constantly every single day on the hour with more information on this topic as soon as it becomes available to them so that they can tell us what's going on if you want a little bit more info i'm gonna put the links down below you guys can go check it out yourself so the first topic is going to be how you can get infected so let's say i have this virus right now and i'm coughing i'm sneezing I'm spitting on my things because I tend to spit when I talk, let's say, and you're with me, right? I spit on these things, I spit in the air, I cough in the air, and you touch me, or I spat on you, anything like that. Next thing you know, you're touching your phone, you're touching your clothes, you're touching your mouth, your nose, your eyes, which are your mucous membranes. Now you have potentially just infected yourself. So you can get signs and symptoms as soon as two days and at a maximum of 14 days, which is a really big number. But the problem with this virus is that you can be asymptomatic. So you can have this virus, not know that you have it because you're not getting any signs and symptoms and affect a whole bunch of people. So the point here guys, and this is why we're making it such a big deal, is to keep yourself clean. Next topic is gonna be what and how does this virus work? So we're gonna get a little bit more in depth on the science here, but please stick with me. I'm gonna try to keep it as simple as possible. So this virus is in a family of coronaviruses. So this virus they're calling the bat virus, which is just one of many viruses. We've had two epidemics like this before in the past, SARS and MARS, which are two different diseases that still cause the same issue, with, which is severe respiratory distress. So you're having a very hard time breathing, a very hard time getting in air, very hard time exchanging oxygen and blood fluid. This is the big problem with this virus. So this virus doesn't kill you, yet it's what it does inside that causes this big distress that we're having. When you have inflammation in your body, we have cytokines that are produced, right? So just think of this as like, I bruised myself and now there's inflammation and now there are cytokines being produced. This is from an injury, a cold, whatever it is when it comes to inflammation, this is what happens. Let's say you are an unhealthy person, you're over the age of 60, your immune system is shut down due to stress, right? Everyone's stressed right here. What happens is that your body overproduces cytokines. This puts your body in a huge shock, producing more and more and more cytokines, which shuts down your body. Now with this virus, as I said before, it tends to target the lungs, your respiratory system. So what happens here is that you're getting a whole host of chemicals that are being released, interleukin-6, inter interleukin-1b, uh, uh, COX enzyme. These are all inflammatory chemicals that get released in the family of cytokines. And this causes a jump in distress. So what's gonna happen here is your lungs are gonna start to break down. You're gonna start to get symptoms of pneumonia, right? That shortness of breath. You feel like whew, you're trying to breathe really fast. These are the issues that happens. And what tends to happen with this virus is that you start to build up fluid inside the lungs. We're decreasing oxygen to spread through the body. We're decreasing blood flow and nutrient exchange. And this is the main issue that causes even more signs and symptoms, which we will get into later in this video. Now, the reason why I said we're gonna get a little sciencey here is we're gonna go back to some biology, all right? 
Now this is a PowerPoint that I got from my girlfriend and her friend that's in university here in Montreal in her nursing class. And the McGill professor provided a full out PowerPoint on this virus, which is really cool. And I want to share it with you guys. So this disease, the virus itself has four proteins. We're going to talk about two of them, which is the big picture here. We have a spike in glycoprotein, so S, and we also have genomic RNA. So if you remember biology, when you're in grade 11, grade 10, RNA is like a messenger to reproduce more cells, right? And glycoproteins are in your cell membrane. So you have your cell membrane and you have glycoproteins that stick out. The problem with this virus is that these glycoproteins have a phi affinity to angiotensin, uh, converting enzyme 2. That's just a big name to say that this protein binds onto your cell membrane and it starts a chain of reactions that start producing inflammation in the body and along with the genomic RNA, so that messenger to transcribe and produce more of this virus is the problem here. So you're getting a protein that binds to your cell membrane very, very well along with an RNA that allows it to reproduce like wildfire. Next topic, what are the signs and symptoms? So we're gonna go from mild ones all the way to the severe ones, all right? This is what so far people have been finding. You will either get pneumonia-like symptoms, so starting off if you have a mild condition, shortness of breath, little bit, you might be coughing, you might have a fever, you might feel um, tired a lot, a lot of fatigue that's going on, and that's gonna be due to the decrease in oxygen and blood flow in the body, as we described before. We can get that fluid retention, we can get organ failure in the kidneys and in the lung. This is where a lot of those severe cases that are in ICU, these are the patients that are dying right now. It's because this is what the virus is causing. They state that you can also have coughing of blood, decreased white blood cells, which would make sense due to the exponential increase in your cytokines, right? Nasal congestion, you could have a sore throat, you can have pain in muscles and joints, you could have chills, you want a nauseous, vomiting, and diarrhea. Those are all the signs and symptoms. But the severe cases, so if you know anyone that's getting some of these, it's gonna be the high fever, coughing up blood, decrease white blood cells, kidney failure, shortness of breath. So if any of you guys are getting any of these symptoms, whether it's mild or severe, please follow the protocol, whether you're in Canada or the US or your province, call the numbers that you need to, go see the doctor, but make sure that you're on high alert when it comes to these signs and symptoms so that you can make sure that you're safe. Next one, guys, is gonna be who should be on high alert. Now, my point of view, everyone should. Right, as we mentioned before, if you're asymptomatic, you will be giving this virus to everyone. So I personally think everyone should be on high alert. But what the World Health Organization did state is gonna be these next individuals. So elderly, over the age of 60, immunocompromised, asthmatic individuals, hypertensive, high blood pressure, unhealthy, poor lifestyle, and stress. Now, the first couple are what the health organization posted on their site. The next one, uh, when it comes to stress, is gonna be what I added, because I find that this virus is causing a worldwide panic attack where everyone is getting extremely stressed and worried about this virus. And if you know anything about stress, it will cause a poor immune system and you will be immunocompromised compromised due to the stress shutting down your immune system. Another one, guys, is gonna be sleep since sleep is a huge indicator on recovery and making sure that everything is working up optimally, especially when it comes to your immune system. So lack of sleep, you're gonna shut that immune system down, uh, putting you more in harm's way of getting this virus. Next topic is gonna be, can a diet protect you from the coronavirus? The answer is no. No, God, no, no. It's not, all right? I'm, really pissed about this one guys and uh, like honestly it really really made me bad i saw um this psychiatrist that's not even a doctor on anything when it comes to nutrition his name is paul saladino so paul if you're seeing this video i doubt you are because i don't have that many subscribers you're an idiot and i mean that in the nicest way and i personally think that you should take your license and throw it in the garbage or whoever gave it to you should revoke it from you because if you're going to write on your social media platform where you have thousands or even close to a million people looking at you for advice when it comes to the carnivore diet just to sell your book and say the carnivore diet will protect you from coronavirus you're out of your mind out of your mind all right I'm a plant-based 
athlete, I'm not even gonna tell you guys that plants are gonna protect you from this virus. That is not gonna happen at all. What I am gonna say though, is that if you are taking the steps to boost your immune system and stay healthy, those are the best chances for you guys to stay at optimum levels to make sure the virus doesn't put you in one of those severe cases, right? So I'm gonna give you a few things that you guys can do. And if you are someone out there and you see these posts online that are saying, hey, do this to boost up your immune system to protect you from the virus, you're gonna comment in their post right now with middle finger and you're gonna say you're spreading malinformation and this guy over here will teleport to their house and sock them in the mouth because I swear to God, I'll do that. All right, cool, next, let's move on. So what you can do, all right, cold showers, guys. Cold showers and baths are really gonna help when it comes to boosting your immune system. Wim Hof is a big one that really talks about and preaches this when it comes to decreasing inflammation and increasing your immune system. This is a big one. If you wanna know more about it, go check out Wim Hof. As well, I'll put a little card up here. You guys could check out a video I did on how to start increasing your cold exposure through contrast baths. So a little card right here. Next one, if you have a isolated sauna at your house, so don't go out in public. That would be like the worst thing for me to tell you is to go in a sauna where a whole bunch of sweaty people are. Like, don't do that. But if you have one at your house and you're fortunate enough, sauna is gonna be a great one, guys. It really shows great protection when it comes to your gene through heat shock proteins and really to remove toxins in the body. That's gonna be another great one. Next one, as I mentioned before, sleeping, guys. Sleep, sleep, recover. It's a really, really easy thing to do. You're at home anyways now doing nothing. Go to bed, wake up, sleep. All right, next one, movement. Constant movement throughout the day. Because we're sitting down and doing nothing right now at home, everyone is stuck, they have no idea what to do. Move a little bit, do some stretching, do some yoga, walk around the house. I just posted a home workout that you guys can do at your house. I'm posting a mobility workout that you guys could do at your house. I'm posting as much as I can for you guys to move and stay active in your house so you're not just sitting all day watching TV and Netflix. Netflix, you guys are getting a lot of views right now. I see that. Like I said, plants will not protect you, but a higher plant-based diet will give you all the nutrients that you do need to put you at an optimum level when it comes to your immune system. I'm sorry, the carnivore diet does not fucking do that at all, but plants do. Even individuals that aren't plant-based, uh, let's say two big ones, Ben Greenfield is a huge one, who did do the carnivore diet, and did the vegan diet, and did the keto diet, and did everything like that, even preaches higher plant, uh, higher plant-based meals. So not fully vegan, you could be an omnivore, but a higher plant-based diet does provide protection for your body, all right? So that's gonna be another big one. Second is going to be meditation and breath work. This is for the mass pandemic of stress that's going on. So really being able to produce, uh, to reduce your stress by stimulating your parasympathetic nervous system. So this is gonna be the system that really tells you to calm down and relax. Reduce stress is gonna be a big one and getting in those typical cardio sessions, right? So hit at home and list at home as well. If you don't know what to do, don't worry. I'm gonna be posting these videos on my channel, on Instagram, so you guys have some stuff to do so you don't have to make it up yourself. Boosting your immune system through these methods are gonna be the best type of practice. Just keep yourself as healthy as possible, okay? It's not gonna protect you. You're just gonna keep your body... What, what does this mean? Keep your body at the healthiest level. This is all the way up. We went all the way up. All the way up. Healthiest level. This is where we're at. All right, next. If you haven't yet subscribed to my newsletter, a little shameless plug here, guys, down below in my newsletter, I post emails three times a week. In my last email, I did talk about some foods that are very particular when it comes to your immune system. So it's gonna be garlic, ginger. Those are two that I use every single day, whether it's a powder, whether I make a drink with it, I like to make my turmeric ginger uh, tea that I make at my house. Those two foods are gonna be very powerful. I personally love and read all the research on these that I've created a little immune pill. If you guys do want that, it's super, super easy, so you don't have to consume it. You could just take the pill, put it in your mouth without having to eat those foods. I know a lot of people don't like ginger so much or don't like garlic because of the smell. So taking that pill is another easy way out. So doing these practices are gonna keep your body at the most optimum level as possible. It's not going to make you invincible, but it's gonna protect you as much as possible. Next topic, and this is gonna be the fun one for you guys, is gonna be how to protect yourself. So 
Wash your hands with soap and water, okay? None of this and then finish thing. Take about 15 to 20 seconds to really wash your hands. Go a little bit higher up in the wrist since when we cough, it's not always hand things. A little bit of the forearm does get infected. So make sure you're really washing your hands for 10 to 15 seconds, uh, 15 to 20 seconds. Like the little tips I gave you guys before, staying away from people at least a couple of feet, making sure that you're inside. An easy thing to do is the clothes that you wear when you go outside, take them off, throw them in the wash. Don't keep wearing them. Don't lay down on your bed. You're just contaminating yourself or increasing the chances of getting sick more. And the next one, since all the shelves in the stores, guys, have been sold up of soap and hand sanitizer, because of this, if you wanna learn how to make your own hand sanitizer, I'm gonna put a link right up here. Just click on it. It's super simple, it takes about like a minute to make a good amount of hand sanitizer at home. Super, super simple, easy recipe. And I'm pretty sure most of you out there have these ingredients. So click the card right up here to go check that out. Next one, if you wanna take it a step further, guys, everything in your house, okay? You're gonna take some soap and water on a paper. You can take Lysol wipes. I'm lucky enough, my mom works in the hospital, or I'm not really lucky enough because she's the one that's where all the people are sick. <laughs> Coronavirus! But they have a hydrogen peroxide containing around 0.5 to 1% of hydrogen peroxide. I put on gloves and I wipe down everything in my room. So this one comes to my cell phone, I have a case on it, I wipe that down. My backpack, my doorknobs, anything like that since we touch everything in the house. So the stuff you're putting your hands on all the time, I really make sure I wiped all of that down. I really suggest you guys do that just to protect yourself even more. So this next one, guys, my girlfriend brought up to uh, my attention and I've even noticed it, but I didn't really say anything about it until she made it a point because it really frustrates her. She's a nurse as well. So we take gloves, right? I'm sure you went to the store. They do this. I don't fit in these gloves, but okay. Whatever guys, you get the picture. These gloves are too small for me, but take gloves. I'm a cashier woman or man. We're not sexist here. And we're working at the cash. I'm a new customer. I come to the cash. Three people in front of me. What are they doing? They're taking out money that they probably spit and coughed in their hands, touching their wallet, giving it to the cashier. Cashier has this gloves on, takes it, does her stuff, takes more money that probably has been touched by other people, spat on everything like that, and then gives it back to you. What else does she does? She takes your food, your apple, your pepper, your banana, your oatmeal, all your food. She touched all your food with her hand, plus the money in the person in front of you, with everyone in line. So do you really think that this is gonna protect you from the coronavirus? No, okay, because how gloves work is that every patient you see, especially in the clinic when I'm treating uh, athletes and I need to touch something on their skin, like an open wound, I'm touching them and only them, and then I'm taking my gloves off and throwing it in the garbage to take a new pair to touch somebody else. What you can do is take your hands and wash them. This is the point that we're talking about. Gloves are not gonna protect you, and if you're in the store, I would highly suggest going back home and cleaning everything you just bought because the person just touched everything that you're about to put in your mouth. So this is why this virus is so crazy and this people think that they're taking precautions that aren't really doing anything for you. If anything, it's just making matters worse and I'm gonna give them the benefit of the doubt. Sometimes they just don't know, right? I'm not here just to bash, bash, bash. Sometimes you just don't know and it's true. I don't know a lot of things. When it comes to this, I do know that. So if you know someone and you think gloves are working, it's not, all right? Take them off, wash your hands, that's it, that's all. So I hope this video, guys, was super, super helpful. I hope that the malinformation that you may have heard or that's out there that you've been reading has been squashed and you kind of understand a little bit more of this virus, what you can do, what are the signs and symptoms, how you can stay protected, and how you can make your own soap, pretty much, and hand sanitizer at home. If you have any questions about this, please link them or just comment down below. Let me know any questions that you guys do have. I'll do the best that I can to give you the right information and shoot you in the right direction so you can get your answers. To finish all off, I hope you guys are safe. I know this is a really hard time for everyone right now, but we're all in this together. And that's all I gotta say, guys. Stay safe, stay clean. It's your boy, that's it, Zach. Punch, headbutt, elbow. 
ni. Peace.